the hermitage of Santa Maria de Huacel. To get here, you have entered the Garcipollera Valley and crossed the river Ijuez. Nowadays, hardly any people live in these mountains, just a few in the farm at Bescos de Garcipollera and in Villanovilla. Once, though, many people lived in the valley. Here in Iguacel and in the villages of Acin de Garcipollera, Bergosa and La Rosa. They lived by farming with livestock, cereal fields, orchards and the forest. What happened? In the mid-20th century, with the project to build the Yesa Reservoir 70 kilometers from here, it was decided to regulate the river Ijuez and plant trees in La Garcipollera in order to stop sediment being washed downriver to fill the reservoir with mud. The villages in the valley were expropriated by the authorities and the people were made to leave. Now, in La Garcipollera, you are more likely to hear red deer calling than to hear the voices of people, as the valley was turned into a national hunting reserve and the deer which were introduced were the ancestors of what is now one of Spain's biggest populations of red deer. This hermitage or country chapel, however, is still here, delighting and inspiring those who come to see it, as it has since about the year 1045, when it was built at the orders of Count Galindo of Aragon. The chapel was remodelled in the 11th century to bring it into line with the tastes of the royal court in Hakka. To start, let's go to the doorway at the west end of the church. This is a hake style doorway dating from the 11th century remodelling of the building. The inscription above the door is unusual in Romanesque buildings and according to Antonio Almagro writing in the Artigrama magazine in 1989 it reads This is the Lord's door through which the faithful enter into the Lord's house. It was built by order of Count Sancho and his wife Urraca. It was finished in 1110, which is now the year 1072, in the reign of King Sancho Ramirez of Aragon, who, for the good of his soul, gave the church the village called La Rosa, so the Lord would give him rest. Amen. The writer of these letters is named Aznar. The master of these paintings and sculptures is named Galindo Garces. The Count gave the chapel and its surroundings to the monastery of San Juan de la Peña in 1080. The monks turned it into a priory. Later, it was used for a time by the monks from the order of St. Bernard, and then, in 1245, it became part of San Juan de la Peña again. After this, the chapel has undergone several alterations and restorations. In 1850, the chapel was in terrible condition and was restored to a usable state despite the lack of resources available. In 1975, Antonio Almagro Gorbea was charged with restoring the church and he found it in a terrible state. On his first visit, he had to hack his way through brambles and thorns to get to it. It's very probable that the valley's forced depopulation resulted in the church falling into such a neglected state. Antonio Almagro started the restoration in 1976. Beforehand, the villages of nearby Castillo de Jaca removed the 12th century forged iron screen and a sculpture of the Virgin Mary and Child, which can now be seen in Jaca's Diocesan Museum. However, the Virgin returns in a Romaria pilgrimage procession to this chapel every year on the second Sunday in July. The second part of the restoration began in 1983. Both were necessary and stopped the building from collapsing and returned it to its original form. In 1989, the Sancho Ramirez Association undertook to continue the restoration. Their efforts to conserve and educate about Romanesque art in this area have been highly productive and very important in maintaining La Jacetania's rich Romanesque heritage. Description This is a rectangular plan church with the apse and high altar facing east. It is built with stone blocks. In the less important parts of the church exterior walls, the stones are laid less regularly than in other parts of the church. 
The holes in the walls, which you may have seen in other churches, are called mechinales or putt holes, and were used during building work to slot scaffolding supports into the wall. Let's start at the main doorway. Above the door is a round arched window, and below it, a projecting porch or little roof held up by small corbels, which are decorated on each facet. Below these is the inscription already mentioned, and then the door itself. The surround has five round arch archivolts, and there is the typical hakes checkerboard decoration around the edge of the archivolts. Now, looking at the south wall, we can see a round arched door and two windows. The most interesting feature, however, is the stepped stone moulding framing the upper part of the windows. This was part of the earliest church's decoration, and although simple, is highly decorative. Going now to the east end, you can see the apse with two pilasters connecting it to the nave and two pilasters dividing the apse wall into three panels. The bell tower on the north wall was added to the church in the 12th century. The interior. What first strikes you when you enter the church is its great height. It has a rectangular nave covered by a wooden pitched roof. The chancel is covered and delineated by a barrel vault, and the apse uses the usual quarter-sphere vault. There are 15th century Gothic paintings in the apse, which were brought to light during the restoration work in the 1970s and 80s. The church may have been completely covered in paintings when it was built, but the few traces found couldn't be restored. We recommend that you enjoy the little details of the church, such as the sculpted corbels on the west doorway and the finely sculpted capitals. Take your time to enjoy the peace and tranquility of this special place. You may hear or see a red deer or wild boar, but please don't try and get too close as they don't like it.